Okay, we're getting into uh, part three where <laughs> there's much of my there's much less of my babbling and let's listen to what the actual instruments sound like. So uh, I'm gonna close some of these. My computer is struggling with uh, stream screen capture and <laughs> all of my visual things that I'm asking it to do. Uh, so let's start on this session by, uh, if, if you're not in the habit of doing this, you should. You should hit Command S if you're on a Mac as frequently as possible. Uh, so let's listen to this kick drum here. So uh, this is my um, kick drum channel. Uh, I'm using an SSL channel strip. This is an E-series channel. So uh, what I'm doing is I'm boosting uh, about 60 hertz, because I like kick drums to live around 60 hertz. I'm giving a pretty gratuitous boost here at 8, uh, at 8K for some top end. Um, I'm also pointing a little, uh, a little 4.17 um, at a pretty broad um, pretty broad cue, and I'm also scooping out a lot of 2K which uh, for this I like. Let's play around and see what this sounds like. I'm going to be not so judicious with the low mids. Let's take a... Uh, okay, I like that. I like our high on. Let's crank that a little bit more. I could use a little bit more click. I don't generally like to compress the kick drum. Um, I think it. I think it just kind of sucks the life out of it in a lot of uh, situations. So I, I generally tend to leave that out. Um, what I am going to do though is I'm going to engage my high pass filter on the channel just to take some subsonic uh, muddiness out. I usually do it at about 40 hertz for uh, for stuff like this, only because there's a lot of stage bleed in there too. You don't want to scoop too much of it out. Um, you still want you still want a, a low frequency, but uh, most most speakers can comfortably give you 40 hertz. Um, anything below that just it sucks up a lot of uh, amplifier power. All right, Let's see what that sounds like. Let's listen to our, our uh, sample. So we've got a nice tight tight gate on that. It's got a little bit of ambience to it, which I like. Um, so let's listen to the two together. Cool. Um, so Nuendo is super cool because it has a uh, full channel strip built into the software, so you don't have to use a plugin if you don't want. So on the, the sample kick, let's pull up our let's pull up our channel. I've got a gate going on that. I've got a high pass filter. So the first thing that I like to do, we've got a little preamp knob here too, so it's gonna drive. Uh, you should try to get your, your trigger and uh, the actual drum. To try to be around the same height. Now the first thing that you wanna do is you wanna flip the phase. Or excuse me, that is an incorrect term. <laughs> we wanna invert the polarity. Whichever version of the inverted polarity, uh, that's that's what you should use. Now, uh, it should be said that I time aligned all these tracks to the snare drum, um, so they all the tracks are are hitting our our record bus at the same time now. Um, so inverting the polarity may have an effect and it may not, but just as as a rule of thumb, you should if there are ever two things that are uh, there are two instances that are the same source, like if you have a snare drum uh, with top and bottom, or if you have a kick drum, like in a studio, you'll have a kick in, a kick out, and a, and a sub kick. Um, or some people like to mic the uh, kick drum from the from the batter side where the beater hits. You should always invert the polarity uh, to, to make sure if that's an improvement or not. So let's listen. This is what the polarity inverted. 
we're listening to which has the most low end. Uh, to my ears, they sound exactly the same. <laughs> I don't know if uh, if y if if you and the uh, the listening public are uh, are hearing the same thing or not. So we'll just I don't think we'll leave that alone. Um, I do want to engage a uh, noise gate. Actually, I lied. Let's not gate this because it, it already is technically gated because it's a sample. And I like the ambience that's on there. So I'm going to engage my high pass filter. I'm going to do this one at, let's say, 30. Just because it. Since we're using a trigger, it doesn't have any stage bleed in it. So we can, can just do that. Um, there's two ways to use the EQ in uh, Innuendo. You can either use um, the screen here and just drag your frequencies around, or you can use knobs if you're used to it using a console. Do a little boost at 65. A little cut here. Uh, I always like to to cut 250 to 300 to 350 out of kick drums. It's just it's where I like them to live. Take a little high end out of this too. Let's listen to it with our drum, our real drum. Let's engage a gate on our real drum and see see what that does. So you can hear how it took the bass guitar out now. So the, the bass bleed that we're hearing from the stage is now gone. Now something cool you can do with the uh, with the kick drum, which I think I'm going to do in this instance because it's live, is uh, let's call up a reverb. Let's call up our small verb and see what that sounds like. I'm going to activate it. We're in a solo. Let's just activate our return here. So let's take this down a little bit. So you'll notice that you just hear that little bit of, of tail in there, but it makes the kick drum have a little bit better of a stereo uh, presence. So we'll just kind of... I like that. That's a nice fat sounding kick. So if you'll notice that we also are not hitting our, our trigger and our um, our actual drum at the same velocity. They're both not hitting zero. But you'll also notice that they're hitting the our real drum is hitting nice and hot. We're going we're going above uh, zero, but we're not clipping. Um, so let's bring up our snare drum now. Bring up our snare drum and then the three. channel. So you can 
here, there's a pretty serious gate on that. The SM57 is good for a lot of things, but it does not naturally have a lot of high end there. You have to really bring it out. Good rule of practice for EQ is to use a very wide cue in your boosting and a very narrow cue in your cutting. Not saying that's gospel, it's just a uh, rule of, of thumb that I like to. I've got a high pass filter on here at about 100. We can use a little compression on it, but let's use a high ratio so it's not super apparent. So let's see, what are we at? About seven and a half to one. Let's go back where he's hitting it. trigger in and see what that sounds like our sample ladies and gentlemen 1986 is back um, this is uh, this is a sample that I like to use a lot um, let's put some, uh, some large verb on this and see what it does it might be too muddy you can use a large verb with a gate and it's very cool. Again, we want to uh, invert our polarity, which it is. Just activated our noise gate here. Um, Engage auto release. Okay, wants to live around there. I knocked some uh, a pretty a more aggressive high pass and then a more aggressive low pass out. Reverbs can can have a lot of uh, high uh, high and low uh, artifacts that we want to maybe get rid of.
So we're noticing here that most of this of our snare sound is still coming from our actual snare drum. This is just driving our, our reverb a little bit. So I have a noise gate on here. Let's leave that on. Uh, we may want to take that off in the future, but I don't know. Let's listen. So we also have a snare bottom. So let's see what that sounds like. some presets here <laughs> got a gate on that also let's invert our polarity and that's an improvement that we got on get back where it was hitting it with it out. Again, this is a time aligned project. Take our, uh, take our high pass filter up. Take this down a little bit. Blend to taste. <laughs> In this. Let's listen to our toms. Um, this uh, this you should loop. Uh, I like to loop my uh, tom section just to uh, get a couple of good hits and EQ them in. Uh, now, if you'll notice, I'm I'm pretty judicious with the EQ. Um, in in terms of in terms of boosting, um, for for certain types of music, especially pop music, uh, a drum kit, a natural drum kit in its natural state does not sound like you want it to. <laughs> it's uh, an, uh, first of all, you don't listen to a drum kit like uh, in its in its natural state on a pop record. If you stick a microphone inside of a kick drum, no one is going to listen to a kick drum with a microphone inside there. So the, there are people that are like, I just want the drums to sound as natural as possible. It's like, well, that's cool, but if you're going to close mic them, they'll never sound as natural as possible because that's not what drums sound like. Um, so the other thing that a, a lot of people uh, will, will turn their nose at is uh, the uh, severely boosting frequencies. And what I say to that is use your ears. If it sounds good, do it. In, in a studio environment like this, um, you don't have to worry about uh, feedback in a PA system or, or anything like that. Boost away. If you need to hear more 8K, boost 8K. You know, if it, if it sounds uh, phasey or weird or any of that other kind of stuff, then don't do it. But if it sounds right to you, don't let anybody in any book tell you what, what you should and should not do. That being said, in a live situation, I very rarely boost. Um, but in a, in a studio situation, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm not afraid to boost. Um, so let's pull up another SSL EQ just because I like the way that SSL EQ sound on drums. There's certainly nothing wrong with the uh, channel strip. It's just I, I've grown accustomed to a certain sound uh, with drums. So let's listen to our Tom one. Tighten up my loop here a little bit. Uh, let's not use this EQ. Let's use a channel strip instead. There's a lot of, the more toms you have and the more volume happening around your drum kit, the more sympathetic vibration you're going to get on your, um, your heads. So let's use a gate to fix that certain issue. Top end, 8 8K on an SSL EQ sounds very good. Okay, we're losing a little bit of the point.
I like toms kind of squishy. I like to use lower ratios on toms with a slow release time. Engage our gate. Now we're noticing that there's a pretty uh, little bit of a gain stage difference here. So let's take our tom one down to match our tom two. Take our tom two up a little bit. Now we're a little even. Sorry, we're a little laggy here. There's uh, I'm using uh, QuickTime to uh, record this. So let's see. Let's find a good floor tom here. And the floor tom I like to make pretty massive. I almost like it to be an 808 kind of tom. Let's see. I like floor toms that are. I like floor toms that are another kick drum. That's usually the way I like to do it. gonna do a little bit of a high pass filter here. This one you're gonna want to compress just a little bit. Let's talk about panning here. I generally like to pan the drum kit uh, from the perspective of the audience. Uh, this is a, uh, a matter of personal preference. Um, I just think that nobody hears the hi-hat on the left-hand side except the drummer. Um, so let's listen to some toms and see what they like to be. So far, my kick and my snare are, are, are dead center. So let's listen to some toms. So I like to pan. Let's start. How about we pan our toms? 
let's do our our rack toms at right 30 and we'll do left 30 and we'll see what that sounds like and we'll put our mid tom to the left slightly do it yeah 22 So that being said, we're going to put our ride symbol, which this is another thing that is uh, is is gold. Um, some most people will put overhead left or overhead right. Um, I hate that. It doesn't it doesn't tell you what what the thing is. This is the overhead mic over the hi hat. Okay, cool. We're going to make sure that we put that by Tom one. So <laughs> we're going to put that. Let's let's hard pan these to start, and then we'll move them in. Um, uh, I did this kit with ATM 450s, which is a uh, Audio Technica side address small diaphragm condenser, um, and I I actually uh, mic'd the cymbals from underneath. Uh, these are not technically overheads; these are underheads. They're on a clamp uh, attached to the drummer cymbal stands, and uh, that's um, actually let's bring these back to center. I want to I want to make sure that we check the phase on these. Um, okay, so let's listen to our overheads. Uh, doing them from underneath takes a lot of the stage bleed out. I wouldn't necessarily recommend doing that if you were in a, a beautiful controlled studio, but in the stage, it's a very nice, clean way to uh, take your overheads. Uh, let's bring our drum kit back in. You may find that... Listening. Yeah, the, the polarity here really isn't as much of an issue because, like I said, I time-aligned the, uh, the tracks. Let's take our high-pass filter out. Now is when inverting the polarity makes a big difference. So let's keep that inverted actually. So what I'm listening for here is I'm going to pull up the high pass filter just until the bass guitar kind of disappears from that. hearing the uh, the gates from the tom mics I'm just boosting a little high end and I'm taking some low end out uh, so what I did was I did this to one channel um, so what I'm going to do now is let's see if I can remember this key command um, 
think if I just hit option, this will just drag this over. And it does, so it duplicates it. So now let's just listen to this. Let's see how everybody's behaving on both sides. So uh, it's a five-piece kit with, with two, two rack toms. There's uh, two toms up and a floor tom. So the uh, ride cymbal is directly over the rack tom. So we're hearing a gated ride cymbal from tom two. Which, which is really not bothering me. brought our hi-hat out. So there's these guys. Now we can take our rack toms down. Wouldn't mind having a little bit of verb on our, uh, mind having a little bit of verb on our overheads just to make it a little bit more natural. But let's use a small verb. Let's, let's put this into our small reverb. Cool. So we're not we're not necessarily hearing the tail of the reverb here. Uh, it's just adding some some space to the drum kit, uh, so it sounds a little bit more natural. Um, this is uh, a drum kit that is close mic'd, and uh, the cymbals are mic'd from overhead. So there's really not much natural about this drum kit. Um, but the reason why I did that is because we also mic the room. Um, so when we add the room mics in, this will make our drum kit sound a little bit more natural. So let's take this out, engage it in a solo group, and bring it in. Sounds like a real drum kit again. But the cool thing about this is we have total control now over the drum kit. So let's see what this is doing in compression. All right, we're not being shy. We're hitting them. But uh, they're not they're not terrible. We don't really have much crazy phasey artifacts here. Pretty, uh, pretty nice sounding tight drum kit. Now, we EQ'd a lot of things in solo, um, and we, we did a lot of this without listening to the rest of the band. All this is is a, is a rough starting point. Um, this is just something to get us, get us going. Um, everything is subject to change when we, uh, when we start listening to things in the other mix. Um, so this concludes uh, this part on the drum kit. <laughs>